This is an October episode of Before the Pitch where you can love New York baseball no matter what shade of blue you're wearing. Happy Halloween. It is one of my favorite holidays, and I hope it is for you guys too. And to celebrate this holiday, we are going to explore some of the spookiness and curses of baseball. Now, in case you've never met a baseball fan or a baseball player before, the sport as a whole is very, very superstitious. And if you'd like a recommendation for a children's novel about uh, the superstitions of baseball, I recommend Two Hot Dogs with Everything by Paul Haven. So let's start in our very own New York City, where the Mets, despite just being the Mets, have been struck by the bobblehead curse. So here's how this begins. In 2002, Gold's Horseradish sponsored a Mike Piazza bobblehead. The following year, 2003, Mike Piazza struggled to stay healthy and only played 68 games with 11 home runs. Now, this would seem like a stroke of bad luck until you realize every Mets player who has been chosen for the Gold's Horseradish bobblehead ever since has either gotten hurt, took a performance nosedive, or have just completely disappeared. Guys like John Franco, Pedro Martinez, Jason Bay, of course, Paul LaDuca, Johan Santana, Ike Davis, and Francisco Rodriguez have all been victims of the bobblehead curse. It is to be noted that Santana did throw his no-hitter after appearing as the bobblehead, but like Piazza, his ability to stay healthy became very, very spotty. Now let's take the subway across New York City to Yankee Stadium, which is practically a shrine of baseball ghosts and superstition as it is. It has been mentioned a few times that A-Rod was cursed himself, being as good as he was and never winning a World Series with a fantastic Mariners team and all that money that he got in Texas. But this does get debunked in, of course, 2009. Personally, I think curse seems like a bit of a strong word. I don't think it lasted long enough. And as I said, this one's broken. I really don't call this one a curse, but, however, Don Mattingly does have a claim to a curse that holds a little bit more weight. Yankee fans often recognize Donnie Baseball as the best Yankee who never won a World Series, which is odd because the Yankees were in the World Series the year before Mattingly's career started, and they won the World Series the immediate year after he retired. In fact, the Yankees also made the World Series in 2003 before Mattingly was hired as the hitting coach. And they didn't win the World Series until 2009, a.k.a. after Mattingly left the organization for the second time, this time off to the Dodgers, who also didn't even win an NL title with him being the manager, despite the fact he has the second highest win percentage of any Dodgers manager and is the first manager to bring the Dodgers to the postseason in three consecutive consecutive years. Maybe Miami will be different? I don't know. The Yankees, however, did benefit from what might be the most famous curse in all of baseball, possibly the most famous curse in North American sports, which is the curse of the Bambino. Now, stop me if you heard this one before. The Boston Red Sox sell their superstar Babe Ruth to the New York Yankees, who goes on to become Babe Ruth. And the Yankees skip their way to 26 World Championships for the next 86 years before the Red Sox can even get one. The curse of the Bambino was broken in 2004, which is the most horrifying thing I can think of, even by Halloween standards. Which, actually, come to think of it, 2004 was the first year Don Mattingly was the Yankees hitting coach. And also the first year they had Alex Rodriguez. Another Sox team who found themselves cursed were the Chicago White Sox, who found themselves unable to win the World Series until 2005, after the 1919 White Sox conspired to throw the World Series. Now, we're ready for some spooky facts about these last two curses. Get this. Both teams were named the Sox. Both curses were set back-to-back -back years, and both curses were broken in back-to-back -back years, meaning they both lasted for 80 six years. And you know what they say. Sucks to socks. Now, if you think the White Sox had it bad, get ready to go to the other side of Chicago where it gets even worse. The Cubs did not win the World Series for a whopping 108 years because a man who was a farmer decided to bring his goat to a baseball game 
And when he was told he had to leave, supposedly, legend has it, he muttered a curse that sent the Cubs into the bottomless, deepest, darkest pit of all of baseball. Now, frankly, I put this on the Cubs because what did you think was going to happen when you screwed with the guy with the goat? The goat has only been the symbol of the devil since the beginning of literature. That's on you. I'm sorry. But anyway, this curse was broken in 2016, finally, against the Cleveland Indians, who were also trying to break a curse of their own own. The Cleveland Indians, a long time ago, traded their superstar named Rocky Calavito to the Detroit Tigers, which sucks because Calavito loved Cleveland and he loved playing for the Indians. And ever since, the Indians could never manage to win another World Series and they haven't gotten that World Series to this day, despite the fact that in 1997 and 2016, they were so close, they could practically taste it and maybe they're doomed to taste it forever. Now here's one you might not have heard of. The Angels attributed their awful luck and performance throughout their history to the Curse of the Cowboy, which suggests that Angel Stadium is built on Indian burial grounds. See that segue that I did right there? Now the name Cowboy references the team's original owner, Gene Autry, who is the singing cowboy my father introduced me to even at a very young age. Anyway, the curse was broken in 2002 when they won the World Series and experienced a very good stretch of some damn good baseball teams for quite a few years. Until the owner, Artie Moreno, changed the name from the Anaheim Angels to the <clears throat> Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. And then once again returned back to the armpit of baseball. And some say that already changing the name to Los Angeles is what resurrected and experiencing the second coming of the curse of the cowboy. Now, who did the Angels beat in 2002? The San Francisco Giants, who, if you follow the pattern so far, were trying to break their own curse. And this is called the curse of Captain Eddie. Now, Captain Eddie Grant was the first MLB player to die in World War I and had a plaque dedicated to him at the Polo Grounds. Then when the Giants went to San Francisco, the plaque was either lost in transportation, maybe vandalized or stolen. Nobody knows. But the Giants did not win the World Series until 2010 after a replacement plaque was put in AT&T Park in 2006, bringing Captain Eddie finally back home with the Giants. It is to be noted that Captain Eddie died in 1918, the same year the Red Sox won their final World Series before their curse would come in just a few years. For the final curse, we will bring you all the way to the Japanese League, where the Henshin Tigers are cursed with the Curse of the Colonel. Now, here's the story, and buckle up, kids. The Henshin Tigers suck. And then in 1985, they were about to finally, for the first time, unsuck and win their first Japan Series title. Until, during a fan celebration that involved throwing people into a canal, someone, and by someone I mean many people, got the bright idea to toss a statue of Colonel Sanders, yes, KFC Colonel Sanders, into the canal with the fans in order to celebrate the only American player on the Henshin Tigers team. And then they blew the Japan series and still haven't won anything since. And they say they never will win until the statue is recovered. But in 2009, it was recovered. However, without a left hand and glasses. And those who believe in the curse, which should be everybody if you're listening to this because you're a baseball fan, you do believe in curses. They still will never win until the colonel finally gets his left hand and his glasses. Thank you guys very much. We hope you liked this episode. Be sure to comment, subscribe, and share, especially with your friends who are not even baseball fans, but do love the spookiness in witchcraft of Halloween. Thank you guys very much. Make sure you can find us on Twitter at B4Mets underscore Yankees. We hope to hear from you guys very, very soon. Take care.